Welcome and thanks for coming to our introduction to the Texas State Archives workshop, part two, finding materials. My name is Richard Gilruth and I'm a reference archivist here at TSLAC. If you missed part one, my colleague Caroline covered what types of materials are in the Texas State Archives and how to access them. You can review that recorded webinar on our website. So in this session, we're going to talk about finding aids, what they are, where to view them, and how to use them. Then we're going to look at how to search for archival materials using our online library catalog. Finally, we're going to end with a brief question and answer session. So please hold your questions till the end. We are located in downtown Austin, Texas, by the Capitol building. Currently, our archives reading room is open to the public by appointment. We always like to share an overview of TSLAC's mission and the services and programs that our agency provides to Texans. Today's webinar is part of our mission to provide Texans access to needed information, and in particular, information that helps you find archival records that we preserve. These are our three service areas. If you wanna learn more about our agency, please visit our website. So let's get started with finding aids. This is a photo of the State Records Center, and the stacks in our archives building look pretty similar. There's a lot of boxes, a lot of records, excuse me, stored in boxes on shelving units. Boxes, maps, and other record types have unique identifying numbers that help our staff find them on the shelf. A key to finding materials in the State Archives are finding aids, which can also be called descriptive guides. As the name implies, they describe state agency records, manuscripts, maps, photographs, and other types of archival materials. Finding aids provide a narrative of the agency history, the records, and their organization. This can help you learn about related agencies and other record types that might be useful to your research. A finding aids folder inventory helps you identify which box to have pulled for your research. And most of our finding aids are available online through our website at the link here. Now I'll show you how you can get to this page from our website. So this is an image of TSLAC's main uh, page. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is click on archives and reference. And this is going to take you to our archives and reference page. After that, you'll see uh, a label that says archives and manuscript and an icon of an archival box. When you click that, it'll take you to uh, this page and then you'll see uh, an icon that looks like a map and it'll say descriptive guides. When you click on that, it'll lead you further down the page and then you'll see process state and local records. So lastly, you'll wanna click on that. So this screenshot shows just the very top of our process state and local records page. The main feature of this web page is a table organized alphabetically by state or local agency name. Even though it's alphabetical, since the table is quite long, or if you don't know the exact agency name, you can search this web page for a word you know is in the agency name, like governor. Use the control F function of your keyboard to pull up the find feature in your browser and then skip to those in entries. Under the title column are links to finding aids that are available through Texas Archival Resources Online or TARA. Finding aids without links are available in our archives research room and they're not searchable online. That's what the volume number uh, is for on the far right. Since we are open for appointments right now, you can contact us if you want to look at a finding aid that isn't available online. You might be wondering, why is it called process state and local records? This table lists finding aids for records that have been processed, but a portion of our holdings remain unprocessed. Unprocessed records don't have finding aids, so they won't be listed here. If you don't find what you're asking, looking for, ask us and we'll be happy to help. So now we're gonna talk about how to use a finding aid and we're gonna look at the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals centralized case files. So the overview and agency history, will talk about what information is in the records. 
then in the table of contents, we also see the restrictions. So this is going to talk about information and access restraints. And if you click that, it would take you down to this section. This will tell you some very important information. It's always important to check the restrictions section. First, we can see that case files are in offsite storage. So you'd need to request them prior to, to your visit and allow enough time for them to be delivered, which is typically one business day. Additionally, some records will have restrictions on access because they have confidential information and need to be reviewed by an archivist. And this can take time just depending on how many uh, on how many records there are and also the nature of the restrictions. So an archivist can do that review. So next, we're going to go back up to the uh, top of the page. And then we look at the description of series. This is an inventory of the records. So when we click on that, we'll go down to see that inventory. So first, you see the box number here. And the box number is what you need to request the materials, but then it also give the contents of the box. Now, as I mentioned, these are court case files, so it gives the case file number for each box. And so you might then identify which case file number you need and use that to identify the box number that you need and request that. So not only do we have government records, we also have non-government records like manuscript and photograph collections. Manuscript collections are created or donated by someone besides a state agency. So the creator of the record, or sometimes the donor, was a private individual or organization. We separate these from state records, which are received as part of regular state business, like records disposition. It's important to note that some government records do include photographs. So this portion of the presentation pertains to photograph collections that were donated by private individuals or organizations. So now we're gonna talk about how to get to those. You might remember the descriptive guide section on our webpage. There's also a link to process manuscript and photograph collections. When we click that, it'll take us to this web page. And so here you see a screenshot of the top of our processed manuscript and photograph collections web page. The links under the title column will take you to the finding aids that are available through Tarot. To search the list of finding aids, you'll want to use the control F function of your keyboard and search for the subject or collection name. Our next webinar in September will go into more detail about TSLAC's photograph collections. So if you're interested to learn more, be sure to sign up. So next, we're going to talk about our online catalog. Another way to search for archival materials is using our online catalog, which will show you brief descriptions of our archival records as well as published works. This option might be preferred by those who are more familiar with library research because you can use search strategies that you already know. So this is a view of our online catalog. The URL is shown here, you can also find it from our website. There are different search strategies to try, but one of the most basic is a words or phrase search. The terminology that might be more familiar to you is a keyword search. When you type something into the search box and hit enter on your keyboard, this is the default type of search that the catalog does. The catalog will search for instances of your word anywhere in the item record. Your results will be all hits for that word. For example, if you typed in Ranger, you won't just get results for the law enforcement group. You'd also get results for the city of Ranger, Texas, wildlife ranger reports, and more. Anything that includes the word Ranger. If you want to search for a phrase, you'll want to put that phrase in quotation marks. For example, you might search for Texas Ranger in quotation marks. One way you can use the keyword search to your advantage is if you don't know the name of the state agency that oversees or is related to your research topic. For example, here's a screenshot of our online catalog where I've done a search using the words Texas breweries. I got four results. So there are two results for books and then two results for archival records. Those books might cite archival records. So I'll probably wanna go back and look at those later. But right now, we're going to focus on the archival results. This last result is for Texas Brewers Institute records. 
and it sounds promising. So I'm going to click on the blue hyperlink title to see the catalog record. You can see that here. So I can see how many cubic feet and boxes I might be working with, but I want to narrow it down even more. So I'm going to click on the red link to this finding aid. And then it takes me to a finding aid. And this should look pretty familiar as we just talked about this just a few minutes ago. I'll use the table of contents to navigate. After reading some of the higher level information, like the, like the overview, agency history and organization, I want to try to find specific records for my research. So I click on description of series here to go to the inventory of records. And then on the left hand side, I see a series on the history of beer brewing. So you want to click on that and then you might see some listing of uh, boxes here and you'd want to request those. Let's go back to the online catalog and try another search. This time I'm going to be doing research about the Texas Capitol building and I already know the agency that created the, build, the records, the Capitol Building Commission. I'll type that into the search box, but this time I'm going to do an author search instead of a words or phrase search. So here I get seven results. Again, some are for books that I want to look at, but I also see an archival collection that includes architectural drawings. This will be a great complement to my research. So I'm just going to click directly on the red hyperlink that will take me to the finding aid. So in reading the overview, I find out that some of the drawings are digitized and they're part of the Texas Digital Archive or TDA for short. Not pictured here, but further down on the finding aid, there is a link directly to the digitized Capitol Building Commission records in the TDA. So I can look at the records online, which saves me a trip to Austin. When you're looking through finding aids, keep an eye out for notes about digitized records and links to the TDA. We're digitizing more and more of our collection so you can make the most of your research time. So lastly, Let's cover a few research tips that might help you. Government records are organized by agency. When using government records for research, think about which agencies would have created the types of records you need. If you're doing genealogy, you want to consider what interactions your ancestor had with the government and what types of records would have resulted from that. For example, if you know they served as sentence in the state penitentiary, the government would have created records of that. Next, you want to narrow by scope and date rather than name. Many finding aids are not name indexed, but will have a narrative description of the records in a box number inventory to narrow things down. For unprocessed records, staff can search our holdings, but again, it will help us if you can narrow down agencies, types of records, and time periods as much as possible. If you don't have a specific date and the collection is not indexed, you might need to go through a lot more materials, so plan ahead for that. Next, you want to think creatively. Oftentimes, you will need to reframe your research in different ways to cross out the most possibilities. For example, if you're researching a government agency that was involved in a court case, you may want to check the agency's records, of course, but court records are also a, a possibility. This means that you may need to do more background research on a topic to get ideas of what other agencies could be involved with your topic. For example, let's say we're researching Texas cattle. The Texas Department of Agriculture is the most obviously related agency, but there could be governor's records or even Texas Ranger records if there were hot topic issues that needed to be enforced or addressed by the government. Lastly, be patient with yourself. Archival research can be hard work sometimes even more when the records were created and organized a long time ago. But it can also be really rewarding and fun. So don't give up and ask us if you need help or ideas. So you can contact us by mail, phone, or email. Our standard response time is seven to 10 business days, but please let us know if you have a deadline for your request that requires a response sooner, and we'll do our best to work within your timeline. When contacting us, it's helpful to provide as much information as possible. 
like collection titles or box numbers for us to better assist you. If you don't have collection titles or box numbers, let us know what you're researching and we can point you in the right direction. If you are interested in our collections at our Sam Houston Regional Library and Research Center in Liberty, Texas, we recommend that you contact them directly. And we've got their contact information on this slide and on our website. So in summary, we talked today about how to use finding aids. Then we talked about how to search the online catalog for archive materials, which will often point back to finding aids. And then we talked about tips for archival research. Thank you very much. We're happy to take any questions now.